So I've got here, uh, it's a delicate little fly. Um, but it's one that served me well on small still waters and the larger reservoirs. Um, where things get a little bit tough. Um, it's just a variation of the cormorant, but I just like that little bulbous head. Um, it's just another trigger for it, that silhouette. It just looks the part like an insect with that big bulbous head. Um, and I've tied it with stripped hair on, just for another, again, just a more natural looking fly, really. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and tie. The first thing I'll do is, I like a small hook, so this is a size 12. Comp heavyweight, size 12. And you'll notice that was barbless. I'm tending to fish an awful lot more these days with barbless hooks. They're just, I don't know, they're just, I think they're actually better at hooking fish. And landing fish than barred ones. So I've got a 1 0 thread, quite thin. I'm just going to start behind the eye to create my body. And we're going to come down a bit. Um, I'm just going to be a little bit past the point at the bend of the hook. There you go. It's a little bit past the point at the end of the hook. And now we've got to come in with some um, stripped quill. This is a, a natural stripped quill. You can do different colours obviously, but for this one, a natural. And then on my side of the hook shank, I'm just going to catch that in there. I'm going to wind up and touch and turns. Squeaky bobbin. To a bit a little bit behind the head. What I like to do with this stuff is um I like to stick in a whip finish. Stops the thread from moving. And you're looking to get this to come up and sort of no overlapping but touching. Turns. And then just secure it. You can be neat, as neat as you like with this. I'm just doing this for speed here. And then <clears throat> just quit finish. And now what we're going to do is I come in with some um, varnish and you just varnish the fly, sorry the body, keeping everything nice and smooth. Everything nice and smooth. Obviously I'd take my time and do that properly, but in good traditional Blue Peter style, I've got one here that I created earlier that I'm going to stick on the, in the vise. So if we just come in and catch this one in. Let me just pull this off of there. So there's one that I've done earlier. Stripped hair on. Very simple. Very nice, clean looking body. And then just back in with the tying thread to the hair on. And make your scissors and trim that. And then <clears throat> some um, black marabou. I like Dave Downey's stuff. Um, and I like this stuff as well, comp candy. So Downey's are comp candies, so the two best ones that are out there. And you want a nice long fibres. We want to take, I don't know, not too much because it's a delicate fly. So you see that I've got a pinch of about an inch. Taking your feathers and just 
twist the fibres there, thin them out a little bit with your thumb and forefinger. It just thins it, makes it better to adhere. And then pinch and loop. Try and get where your thread is. Sorry, where your your hair stops there. Like so. A couple of turns. And then with a sharp pair of scissors, pull everything up at an angle and cut. Don't worry about this bit, we'll tidy him up. You can tidy him up with thread wraps actually. But just come over so you've got your your wing in place there. And then with your thumb and forefinger, you want to come about a quarter inch behind the fly. Grip it tightly and with your other thumb and forefinger, just rip that off. So you've got there a nice tidy small wing. I've now got this stuff, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's a solderini um 51, it's jet black. It's a man-made fibre, and what I like about this stuff is I can do a really tight rope. And the whole point of creating the head here is to create a tight rope. So come down with the thread, on with your dubbing. You want to start thin, so thin at the top, a little bit thicker in the middle, and thin again at the end. And that's what that's what creates that um, sort of rounded afro head. The buzzer, the with the cormorant, sorry. Take some of that off. You have to be careful with this stuff because you don't want a lot. You don't want a lot, otherwise it just looks silly. It becomes too bulky. But what you want to do is, because it's a small, delicate fly, and you'll use it for competition fishing, you want to tighten. As tight as you do with that head, because you want none of those fibres to pull out. Obviously, it'd make the fly a little bit too long. Um, it shouldn't because it's a small size 12, but any man-made fibres can pull, so tighten, really, really tighten. So just come up and create that head. You can see the way I've done the the um, dub in there. It creates that afro hair look, that rounded head shape. So there's a, I've got some extra stuff there. We just got to take that off with the scissors. I'll just cut that in with the thread there so it'll be nice and neat, like so. And then just wet your fingers and stroke stuff back to create a neat, tidy little head there. And with a whip finishing tool. And again, let's come in with the scissors and snip that. Let's see if there's any stray fibres there. That looks looking good. So there you go, you've got that afro head there for the afro cormorant. This one, this afro cormorant is a, a quill bodied one. And with the varnish. And there you go. That is the afro cormorant which works really well on droppers fish in the washing line or a couple of these flies spaced well apart and a slime line in small still waters does very very well it also um, a great fly a little bit fiddly to tie but definitely worth the effort um, that great little profile with the head there Afro Cormorant hope you enjoyed that please subscribe to my channel